So having talked about um, the immune system and types of immunity, acquired immunity and natural immunity, um, now we're going to talk about um, the immune response and um, immune reactions. So with infectious diseases, um, there some occurrence of infectious disease has declined where vaccination rates are high, um, which is ideal. So like polio and measles, where, where you have um, high vaccination rates, you create what's called herd immunity, um, where a high percentage of the population is vaccinated or has experienced prior infection, um, it decreases the chance of acquiring and spreading an infectious disease. So um, in the module on Canvas, I included a link to a one minute medical school um, thing on herd immunity, which is great. I love one minute medical school because you go, oh, I'm uh, waiting for the water to boil. I'm going to listen to one of these. My, one of my other favorites is two minute neuroscience. Um, but just bleep talks about one little thing. So there's one on herd immunity. There's some other ones on the different hypersensitivity reactions. And I have links to all those in the module. So um, sometimes you will get, um, well, it was believed that smallpox was actually eradicated in, in a lot of countries by the mid 50s. And the United States actually discontinued smallpox vaccinations in 1972. So all of us that were um, born before 1972 have little um, smallpox vaccination marks on our arms. Um, and then the people born after 1972 don't have them. So um, the World Health Organization um, said the last case of naturally occurring smallpox was recorded in 1977. So pretty interesting. Um, the polio vaccination was implemented in 1954, and um, polio is a rare occurrence um, to, uh, to these days in developed areas of the world. Um, there have been some more recent outbreaks of measles and mumps in North America, and it's a result of inadequate revaccination of teenagers. So people don't get their booster vaccines, and then there's more uh, chance for disease to develop. So um, microbiologists and immunologists and everything are looking for additional vaccines for um, lots of different things and doing research on genetic vaccines. So a lot of the um, immunological research happens with cancer research and researches for other diseases. So um, I'm pro-vaccination. When you work in healthcare, you got to get vaccinated. That's just, if you don't want to get vaccinated, then don't work in healthcare. That's all I'm going to say about that. So um, emerging infectious disease is where a, an existing disease is newly identified in a population. Re-emerging diseases are ones that were previously under control and um, they, there are outbreaks because of um, either importation of viruses from other countries or a decrease in vaccinations. Um, so measles in the United States is the recent example. There have been some outbreaks because of decreased um, vaccination rates. There's a little thing in the book on bioterrorism. I, I don't know that you really need to know this, but it's basically it's using biological agents to attack civilians or military personnel, and it might be using altered antigenic forms of common viruses or bacteria. Um, it has a widespread impact on the population. And there's no vaccine because they're usually, you know, Frankenstein. So um, that's all we're going to say about bioterrorism. Scary stuff. So when we start talking about um, immune reactions, a thing that commonly comes up in a medical setting is tissue or organ transplant rejection. So they can replace or transplant a lot of organs these days. It's amazing. They can transplant, there's a list in the book, skin, corneas, bone, kidney, lungs, hearts, bone marrow um, are commonly done. You can also do like livers, heart, you know, hearts. Um, I read recently um, in Australia where they're doing um, pancreatic um, 
transplants, which that's amazing. You can cure diabetes, people that have type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is another thing, and we'll talk about that next quarter. But the problem with organ transplant, um, it's when you take tissue, it's the introduction of foreign tissue from one human into the body of another human. And it's called an allograft. So because your genetic uh, markers on your cells is only the same if you get a transplant from your identical twin, um, your body is going to recognize it as foreign and it's going to want to reject and destroy the grafted tissue. So rejection is a problem with organ transplantation. So it, it's really um, involves a type 4 cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction and we're going to talk about the four types of hypersensitivity reaction. But it usually um, involves, it also involves a um, humoral response, and both of those responses cause inflammation and tissue necrosis. So, a hyperacute reaction occurs immediately after the transplant. Um, and so, when you transplant an organ, the body has to establish circulation to the site, and as soon as circulation to the site is reestablished, um, the body's going to look and say, hey, what's going on? Is this our cells or do we need to get rid of it? So a hyperacute reaction is immediately after the transplant. Um, the body's like, nope, this isn't our cell. Um, and it a lot of times um, causes result of, uh, the result is the lack of blood flow to the transplanted tissue, and so the transplanted tissue dies um, and has to be removed. Um, an acute rejection develops after several weeks um, when the unmatched antigens cause a reaction. And a chronic or late rejection occurs after months or years with gradual degeneration of the blood vessels. So usually that is the um, mechanism by which the organ is rejected. It's by um, decreasing the circulation or degeneration of the circulation. Because cells can't live without oxygenated blood, right? So, in order to treat and prevent organ rejection, they use immunosuppression to reduce the immune response and prevent rejection. And it's done by drugs. There are lots of different immunosuppressant drugs in clinical trials. And they use immunosuppressant drugs now for other things too, for autoimmune disorders, which we'll talk about in the next section. So, immunosuppression uses drugs to um, reduce the immune response to prevent rejection. And so there's a lot of commonly used drugs, they're working on other ones. Um, people who are immunosuppressed have a high risk of infection, totally makes sense, right? Opportunistic organisms say, all right, the immune system's down, we're going in. So the four different types of hypersensitivity reactions, um, hypersensitivity is another named for allergic reactions. Um, and basically, hypersensitivity reactions are unusual and sometimes harmful immune responses to normally harmless substances. So the reactions stimulate an inflammatory response. So type 1 is um, common. This is like you're uh, allergic to the trees in your neighbor's yard. <laughs> it's caused by an allergen like pollen. Um, it can cause skin rashes or hay fever. Usually the causative mechanism is exposure to the allergen and your um, immune system develops IgEs and mast cells. Um, the, typical, um, the typical thing that happens, they don't really know why, but when um, the person is exposed to a specific allergen, the body develops IgE antibodies and B lymphocytes, and the antibodies attach to the mast cells, which are connective tissue cells in, that are present in the mucosa, and they sensitize the mast cells. So then when you're re-exposed to the same allergen, the allergen attaches to the IgE antibodies and stimulates the release of chemical mediators like histamines. Um, so 
but the chemical meteors cause the inflammatory reaction. So that's why antihistamines are used to treat allergic reactions. Um, a potential complication of um, a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction is anaphylaxis, and we'll talk about that. So um, hay fever is allergic rhinitis. It's the nasal mucosa is affected. Food allergies, the digestive tract mucosa is affected. Atopic dermatitis or eczema, the skin is affected. And asthma, the bronchial mucosa is affected. So um, any of those things can develop. This is the um, graphic from the book. Into anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock. Anaphylaxis can be severe or life-threatening. It's a systemic hypersensitivity reaction. Um, usually the thing that kills you is decreased blood pressure caused by release of histamine. So um, it can cause airway obstruction, severe hypoxia, and it can be caused by, if you're allergic to latex, it can be caused by insect stings and nuts or shellfish, um, or being allergic to various drugs. So the signs and symptoms are usually um, generalized itching or tingling, especially in the oral cavity, sometimes swelling of the oral mucosa, coughing, difficulty breathing, feeling of weakness, dizziness or fainting, sense of fear and panic, which, yeah, you can't breathe, it's pretty panicky, um, edema around the eyes, lips, tongue, hands, and feet, hives, and um, it can lead to collapse with loss of consciousness. Anaphylaxis is a 911 situation. These are the signs and symptoms from the book. Um, it requires a first aid response. You can administer an EpiPen if you've got one. Call 911 if you don't, because the paramedics have epinephrine, and they can administer that, and they can also administer oxygen. Um, when you're treated in the emergency department, you get epinephrine, glucocorticoids, which are um, anti-inflammatories, antihistamines, oxygen, and they work on stabilizing your blood pressure. So here's my anaphylaxis story. Um, when I used to work in the emergency room, we were having some kind of uh, dinner, and I don't remember what it was for, like we were getting recognized for something, and we were at this fancy restaurant in Denver, and um, some of the people showed up right off their shift, so one of the paramedics had just gotten off shift and he still had his med kit with him. One of the ER docs was allergic to shellfish, which we didn't know until later. So they served the soup, and everybody's eating, and we're talking. And the, the guy who's allergic, he looks up, and he says, does anybody have any epinephrine on him? And the paramedic who just got enough shift, he goes, yep. And he goes, okay, well, I'm allergic to shellfish, <laughs> and I'm starting to get symptoms. And so everybody jumped on it. They gave him the epinephrine. It was fine. <laughs> and, you know, luckily, having um, paramedics and emergency docs on hand is really handy especially if they have their med kits with them. So um, anaphylaxis can kill you. It's a, it's a 911 situation. Type 2 is cytotoxic hypersensitivity. Um, it's where the antigen is present on a cell membrane. It might be a normal com body component or it might be exogenous. Um, so circulating IgGs react with the antigen and they destroy the antigen by phagocytosis or cytolytic, cytolytic enzymes. Um, so this is what happens in a, an incompatible blood transfusion. So that's why type O blood is considered the universal donor, because the type O red blood cells do not have any antigens on their red blood cells. So you're not going to get this type 2 um, cytotoxic hypersensitivity response. Type 3 is the immune complex hypersensitivity where the antigen combines with the antibody forming a complex which is then deposited into tissues, often in blood, ve um, blood vessel walls, and also activates the complement system causing inflammation and tissue destruction. So a lot of diseases are now thought to be caused by immune complexes including glomerulonephritis and rheumatoid arthritis. In the case of glomerulonephritis, it's a great word, I love it. Um, we'll talk more about that when we talk about the um, kidneys in uh, next quarter. Um, the uh, glomerulus in the um,
kidney tubules are affected. Um, in rheumatoid arthritis, it's the joints that are affected. So type 4 cell-mediated or delayed hypersensitivity, this is the one we talked about as being um, the one that comes into play in organ rejection. It's a delayed response by sensitized T lymphocytes, which release lymphokines. It causes an inflammatory response. Lymphokines are another form of um, chemical mediator. Um, it destroys the antigen, the inflammatory response. So the, if the antigen is the foreign tissue from the transplanted organ, it wants to destroy that. Other examples be, besides tissue rejection are the tuberculin test, where you get the little injection, contact dermatitis, and allergic skin rash. Those are all type for cell-mediated delayed hypersensitivity. That's the graphic from the book. So in the next section, we're going to talk about autoimmune disorders.